about this Funny or Die video? Okay, so this Funny or Die video is definitely for the holidays. It's Elf on a Shelf. And uh, it's basically the typical suburban family who gets an elf on the shelf. And um, some little risque business ensues between my character, the mom, and the elf. And uh, before this video, had you ever heard of Elf on the Shelf? I had heard, yes. In fact, I had my um, brother and sister-in-law and kids come over one Christmas, and they stayed with us for about a week, and we did Elf on a Shelf. So I got the whole lay of the land as far as, you know, the elf is watching you at night, you can't touch the elf, or the magic powers go away, and he's going to tell Santa whether you are being good or bad. And, uh, and how do you feel about this borderline disturbing trend of kid surveillance to make them be good all year. I know, it's definitely kid surveillance. You know, I, I mean, honestly, just I feel like everything in general gets more and more over the top. Um, it, I mean, we'll see. I, I think it's it goes a little, you know, a little too much, but, but I'm not going to control it. So if kids want to believe in this elf as well as Santa, great. Sure, why not? Why not? Uh, Alyssa wants to know, uh, she says, Happy Holidays. Thank you. Do you have you. any favorite holiday traditions? Um, for holiday traditions, my mom and I always make, you know, a really good party mix that just sits in a big glass canister for about a month. And we'll cook it up and it just smells so good in the house and just keep snacking, it up, snacking on it. I also just love hot spice wine, just the smell of it. The mold cider and the wine just makes me feel like a holiday. So, um, and cookies. Gingerbread's like my favorite cookie ever. Right on. Uh, uh, Nick wants to know what have you been up to late, uh, lately? Any new projects? Yeah, in fact, I just did a uh, movie for the Hallmark Channel. It's a Valentine's Day movie. It's called A Worthwhile Life. And um, it's coming out, I think, the end of January. Uh, we filmed that. Uh, with Adrienne Grenier, and it's a really cool story um, that should be coming out soon. And then I did this really kind of funny independent film, this superheroes type um, spoof. So hopefully that will come out later this year. Uh, someone said they, they love your contributions to the Magnolia soundtrack. Think they mean Amy Mann. Yeah. Uh, that, but still, it's a great soundtrack. So it's it is worth, a good it's worth a mention. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Robbie would like to know: Have you stayed in touch with any of the cast of Road Trip? Uh, any of the cast of Road Trip, every once in a while I ran into Todd Phillips, the director. Um, as far as the cast, I do see Breck and Meyer. I, um, we've stayed friends and I run into him randomly and I would say he would be the only one that I have kept, uh, kept up a friendship with. Uh, someone's wondering, and forgive me for not being super familiar, uh, Quantico. How is it playing in Quantico? Not in Quantico, guys! Sorry. That's I okay. Have, I should, see, all right. Well, all right. I'm going to not ask questions that I don't know. Or No, that's I'm, okay. I'm sorry, Amy. Uh, someone wants, Kaylee, yeah. would like to know, do you have any New Year's resolutions? New Year's resolutions? I mean, probably to exercise more, to be honest. I just am not good at keeping up an exercise routine. I feel like that's really healthy and it's something I want to aspire to, but, um, you know, hopefully the New Year's, the New Year will bring more discipline to exercise more. Uh, someone is asking, what was it like working on Just Friends, adding that's their favorite Christmas movie. Okay, so Just Friends was probably one of my favorite movies to work on. We worked in Regina, Saskatchewan. Yes, I said Regina. I couldn't believe there's a town, a city, um, in Canada, and it was the coldest shoot ever, ever, ever. It was usually 20 degrees below zero with a 20% or 20 degree, um, I love all the lingo. I'm in, I'm a Southern California girl, okay? Um, with like a negative 20 chill, so it was like 40 degrees below zero. And uh, But it was super fun. Ryan Reynolds is always just hilarious. So was Anna Ferris and Chris Klein. And it was just, um, it was just a super fun movie to work on. And the director, Roger Cumble, uh, made it really fun because he had all of us just crank up our performances to see how wacky we, over the top we could get and then he would dial us back so it was kind of fun in, in an improv -y kind of way. Uh, Jordan would like to know, a lot of questions about a lot of your, uh, a lot of things you've been in. Uh, okay. Did you enjoy shooting Scotland PA? 
I did. So I did Scotland PA in Nova Scotia and um, that was another really fun movie because playing sort of this gypsy uh, character with Andy Dick and Steve Lepich was, was fun. Um, this hippie gypsy and I, I thought the writing was great and it was so clever and actually I run into somebody a couple years ago who said that they uh, watched it in their film class in college so I was impressed that they actually would show that in a film class but I like that they adapted it from Macbeth and made it contemporary. Uh, questions about uh, another Breckenmeyer movie you were in, Rat Race. Uh, Someone's okay. asking, was that a fun movie to, to film? It looked like it was so much fun to watch. Yeah, Rat Race was, was really fun. I, I got cast in that part and I was like Oh my gosh, I'm up against like the biggest comedians ever. I've got to keep up and I got to give it my all or I'm just going to just fall to the wayside. So I felt like this fun sort of competitiveness with everyone and, um, and you know, uh, Rowan Atkinson. I mean, behind the scenes, he's such a cool, suave guy. And then the minute he clicks into character, he's so googly eyed and awkward and weird. And, um, and all and Whoopi Goldberg. I mean, she's always been one of my favorites, and I was so excited to work with her. And and John, um, um, there was just so many different characters on that that I loved to to work with. And playing the psycho helicopter pilot was pretty fun. I got to take some helicopter lessons, and uh, and then I lost my voice for two weeks after that crazy scene. So. A little behind the scenes info. Yeah. Uh, a few people are asking about Shameless. Uh, they said, a lot of people said you were great on Shameless. And they want to know what happened to your character. Do you have any information on that? They seem to say you just disappeared. I did, guys. Bring me back. No, I, I uh, Jasmine, yeah. She kind of just, she, I think, just sort of went off the deep end. And they didn't really, I think, see much of a future for her on the show. So... I did not come back, although I would love to come back. That was such a fun character, so. Well, I hope they're watching and they bring you back. And me too. <laughs> Anthony is wondering, how would you feel if they made a road trip uh, reboot? If they rebooted the road trip franchise? If they rebooted the road trip franchise? I mean, I don't know if it would really work at this point, because it's been like 15 years. I mean, maybe you would have to be really clever with the storyline. Um, but it was a fun cast, and who knows? I mean, there's been weirder things, so if you want to, you know, start writing in and asking for it, I don't think it's on the radar for them, but you never know. I feel like the whole thing would be filmed on a cell phone. It would, it would ruin the whole plot. It wouldn't make any sense. The whole, the that whole is physical true. tape, you know? Yes, yeah. Different times. There was no cell phones then. There was just regular phones. Uh, a lot of people saying, my voice sounds like Kermit the Frog. I'm going to lower <laughs> my register a little bit. Uh, there's a lot of Muppet questions coming in. I'm just going to drop that down. Oh, my bit. God, you guys. It's so critical. <laughs> um, <laughs> someone's asking if you, uh, if you, how you feel about having uh, Christmas in L.A. where it's not that cold. They say cold needs to be a part of Christmas. How do you feel about that, Amy? I grew up in L.A., so I'm sort of used to this kind of Christmas. That being said, I have gone back to northern Michigan for about a handful of Christmases, and it's pretty awesome to be in the snow. I do feel like if you get a choice to be in the snow and be in like the winter wonderland for Christmas time, I would choose that. But you know, I'll just enjoy the sunshine. Sure. Why? I mean, hard to not enjoy this beautiful weather. <laughs> uh, a lot of questions asking about Crank Three. Do you have the inside track on whether or not Crank Three is happening? You know, it's funny when we were shooting Crank Two, they there was like this rumor going around where they were going to do a Crank Three 3D. But then I have not heard about anything since, and um, I've, I have, I don't think so. I don't think so. But again, I'm not making these movies, so That's maybe true. it's somewhere to be made. Could be a Christmas miracle. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, do you have a favorite actor, if you could pick one, to work, uh, to work with so far in your career? Mm. I think at this point, I think Michael Fassbender would be my top pick. I just find him so incredibly talented. I mean, there's so many, so many actors, but um, I think right now he'd probably be up, up there. More sequel questions. Uh, would you ever consider a Just Friends 2 happening? I would absolutely consider a Just Friends 2. In fact, that would be so much fun. I think we were talking about that on set when we were filming thinking about what it would be like 
you know, 10 years later or whatever. But um, that would be great. I really, I really hope that happens. That would be a fun one. I agree. Maybe you can do like a uh, like a crank three, uh, <laughs> just friends two, uh, like mashup. You know, maybe that could be a, ma a mashup. That could be a big thing. I don't know. <laughs> you millennials, you might be able to mash it all up, and it might make sense. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, there is a there. <laughs> these guys are really noticing. They say the shrubbery at your house is uh, really beautiful, and you have a great landscaper. We're not at your home. Uh, this is not is actually my home, but thank you, thank you. Yep, we're in Silver Lake right now cool neighborhood just really artistic um, group of people in this area right down the streets a really cool place to go have dinner but this is not my home no that's not how things are made in Hollywood we don't just go to your house and <laughs> no you're not at my home sorry no uh, people uh, really love butterfly effect a lot of people are, are mentioning it okay. uh, someone's asking if you've seen both endings and which one you liked more there's a director's cut ending that was a little yeah. darker and the theatrical one. Yes. So originally the script was with the darker version um, where he ties himself up in the womb. Um, but they thought after shooting that it might be too dark to give the audience and leave them quite depressed. So they put so we reshot a new that new ending that's now the ending for the movie. Do you have a, a preference on either ending? Um, I initially thought the darker ending would be so much better, but I sort of do like the ending that they use because it leaves you sort of, it leaves this mysterious hope where you, you think, oh, maybe their future will cross at some point, and who knows, but it leaves a little bit of intrigue rather than like pit of your stomach sacrifice. That, that director's cut certainly is a dark end. Uh, if we have time for a few more questions, uh, someone, wow, a lot, of, a lot of sequels. Now people are asking for a rat race too. I think everyone just wants a sequel to every movie you've been in. Wow. That's the real takeaway. Yeah, Hollywood, I hope you're watching. Yeah. Um, someone's asking about uh, Varsity Blues and saying, what was it like to work on Varsity Blues so young? Oh, Varsity Blues was such a great experience. I felt like we were all such young actors, so excited to just have a job and we all lived in Austin for about 10 weeks. Um, the boys trained learning football and shooting, I think we shot like five weeks of all nights. And, uh, and we got to, they, first of all, they didn't want to put us, the cast, in downtown Austin. They were scared all of us were gonna just party too much. So they stuck us out in the suburbs like 20 minutes away. Um, but we had, Honestly, it was such a great experience and John Voigt was very much like a mentor to all of us We would sit down during uh, Lunches and breaks and stuff and he would just tell us these stories and we'd all just be like puppy dogs like listening and excited and um, And the funny thing for me was with Varsity Blues was it was an amazing experience and everything and I was so Naive I thought oh my gosh, I'm in a big studio film. That's it. My career is gonna be made I don't have to ever audition again. I'm gonna get all these roles from now on. And it was like a total, I was like, and flop. I mean, the movies didn't flop, but I felt like, for me, I felt like, oh, that's not how Hollywood works. You have to work hard and be persistent and keep going, and it's a lot harder than you would think. Um, so that was a good reality check. Hear that, guys? Hollywood is actually hard. Don't just come on out here. Uh, here's a good one to end on from Jason. Uh, if you get one thing for Christmas, Amy, what would it be? Um, one thing for Christmas, well, there's something I would really like for Christmas, but it's a, it's, it's a secret, so I'm not going to tell you. Wow. All right. Well, some things are better left unsaid. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Amy, and people can see this Funny or Die video soon, I'm guessing? I'm hoping. You know, it is an Elf on the Shelf type of video, so I'm assuming that it will be coming out. Very, very soon. Probably before Christmas. Yeah, hopefully. Thank you, guys.